Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take a closer look how to actually calculate an update to the state matrix. And for that, we're going to use some simple examples. The three examples we're going to look at is, let's say we have some fluid rising at a constant velocity in a tank. We have an object that is falling under the influence of gravity. And we have an, an object, like a vehicle, moving in one direction, let's say in the x direction. So our state matrix for each of the three examples in the case of a rising fluid, since that's in the y direction, we need to know the position in the y direction and the velocity in the y direction. For a falling object, again, that's in the y direction, we need to know the position in the y direction and the velocity in the y direction. And finally, a moving object, let's say in the x direction, we want to know the position in the x direction and the velocity in the x direction. How do we make an update? What will be the position and the velocity in an instant later, a delta t later? What we're going to do is, we're just going to look at this portion of the, of the calculation first. We're going to multiply the A matrix times the position, or I should say the state in the previous time frame, and then convert that into the current time frame. Here we're going to multiply the A matrix times the position, the, or the previous state, I should say. In this case, the A matrix looks like this. Now this is a standard form of the A matrix. It has ones across the diagonal, it has a zero in this corner, and the delta t in that corner. If delta t is one second, you put one there. If delta t is a tenth of a second, you put 0.1 there. Notice that the A matrix looks the same in all three cases, because in all three cases, the state matrix, x, looks exactly the same. Position, velocity, position, velocity, position, velocity, and we don't care if it's in the x direction, the y direction, or the z direction. Therefore, all the A matrices look exactly the same. That will not be, this, not be the case for some of the other variables, but you'll see that later. So when we multiply the A matrix times the state matrix, we multiply a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 1 matrix. Since the inner two numbers check, they match, they're the same, we can indeed do that calculation, and the end result will be a matrix that will be a 2 by 1, and that's then the result of multiplying A times the state matrix. When we do that, we have 1 times y plus delta t times y dot, or the velocity in the y direction, so we get y plus delta t times y, which now represents the new position relative to the old position, plus how it changed because of its velocity. It's moving this fast, this much time has elapsed, so we add that delta position to the original position, now we have its new position. The velocity, assuming that there's no acceleration, will remain the same. In this case, we multiply 0 times y plus 1 times y dot, or the velocity in the y direction, and this will be its new velocity. But then you say, well, wait a minute, what if there's an acceleration? What if, especially in the case of the falling object, don't you have an acceleration? Don't you have to account for that? Will that not change the velocity? And the answer is yes. But you don't take care of that here. We take care of that in this calculation because remember, u represents the control variable matrix, which in this case would be the acceleration, the force of gravity causing an object to fall faster and faster and faster. So in that case, the velocity is not updated in this first calculation. The velocity is updated in the second calculation. And we'll show you what that looks like in the next video. Here we simply wanted to show you that this first part of the update to the state matrix, taking the previous state, multiplying times the A matrix, will give you a new position and a new velocity, but not including the new velocity caused by the acceleration. So in this case, the new velocity is exactly the same as the old velocity, because that part is taken care of over here. Now notice that if there's an acceleration, that means that this may not be the complete new position because the new position will be affected by the acceleration as well. But again, that will be taken care of by this calculation here. So at first you see, wow, how do we do this? How do we calculate this in increments like that with a delta t? And simply it's done by first multiplying this, adding that to the multiplication here. Perhaps there's some noise we need to take into account. Then we add that all together, that gives us our new state, which means we now know our new position and our new velocity. This is the first part. The next video will show you the second part, how to calculate this portion. Then we'll add it all up, and then you'll see what that looks like when you update the state matrix.